New Year's podcasts? Yeah, yeah. I'm having a hard time with them. I know, I'm not sure. I'm just looking at my list going, are these good ones to share with people? Is this too personal? Do you usually do resolutions? Uh, sometimes. I mean, yeah. what about you? I usually write them down, and then I hide them, and I don't show anyone. Well, just, did, what, what did you write down? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've got one. Uh, become a senator in at least three different oh, states. states. Oh, states. Yeah, so I think it'd be a good goal to become a senator in at least three That's states. That's not a bad idea. I'm... I'm doing one for the environment. Oh, okay. That's it a good idea. less baths to conserve water. That's a, can, I, can I borrow that one? Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's a good one. I think pass it around. Less baths equals more water. Okay. Equals more water. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I've got another one. Uh, I want to make sure I don't have rabies. I mean, I don't know what That's that looks serious, like. That's serious, man. Yeah, I mean, can you tell? Can you, wow. can you tell by looking? I looked oh, up hey, web. Hey, guys. We're rolling. You're kidding. <laughs> we're rolling. Oh, we can edit this out later, right? Well, hello. I'm Ryan. Hey, and I'm Joe. And this is the UG Podcast, episode four. Yep. Watch it. Hey, everyone. We are excited for 2011 here at the Underground. We have got some big events and shows coming up, starting with the Battle of the Band finals here, literally at the Underground on January 22nd. Featuring music from The Waking Point, Achilles Descent, Plastic Inevitables, and Datum Point. So make sure you can get your tickets now by going to our website, theug.com. Don't miss it. It's going to be a big deal. Right after that, February 5th, we've got a great night of worship. We've really heard a lot of people wanting uh, a night of worship here at the Underground. We're having Ronnie Freeman up. Uh, a lot of you may have heard of him from J.H. Ranch. He's going to be here with a bunch of local worship bands as well. It should be an amazing night for you to come here to the Underground. All right, then on February 18th, we are going to have Disciple here with Write This Down and Project 86. So make sure you come up for that. It's going to be a high energy night of music. And lastly, we just booked this yesterday, John Mark McMillan. Uh, as you'll hear about later on, one of our favorite albums here in the underground is going to be here April the 8th. Uh, a show you don't want to miss. It's one of those shows that honestly, uh, one of those all year, if you could be at one, this is it. Start off 2011 right, get to the John Mark McMillan show. All right, so in this podcast, we want to take a look back at 2010 before we get too far into 2011. We're going to start off with music. I brought a couple of mine, Joe, a couple of my picks here. Uh, Lecrae Rehab, solid hip-hop album. I mean, one of those ones you can just crank up. A great follow-up to Rebel. Uh, Beautiful Things by Gunder. They were here last spring. We really hadn't heard much about them. They were amazing. I mean, they were, I think they're like a six or seven piece band. Very cinematic, um, raw talent. Unbelievable. Jars of Clay, The Shelter. It's one of those albums that a lot of people, for whatever reason, just kind of passed over. They need to go right on back to it because it is solid. It's a collaborative album. They're playing with people like Brandon Heath. They're playing with people like Gunger. Playing with a bunch of people, Matt Marr, others. And these collaborations, I think uh, one of the best albums of 2010. Okay. Uh, a couple I want to add to that, which those are all really good. Um, I really like Black Keys, their CD, Brothers. Um, just listening to it lately, and I really like that. And they're Ohio natives. Great. Yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> we also have um, Mumford & Sons, and I can literally recommend 11 out of the 12 tracks from their CD, Sci No More. So make sure you check out those 11 tracks. Also, um, I really like uh, The National. They have their new CD, High Violet, which is really good. And then also Monsters of Folk, which is made up of just some superstars like Bright Eyes, um, My Morning Jacket, uh, also M. Ward. So it's just got all these really talented people together uh, on one stage or one CD, if you will. I also, uh, we mentioned this earlier, who's coming in April, John Mark McMillan's album, The Medicine to Me, was the pinnacle of 2010 for me. I listened to that album literally for two weeks once it was released. Didn't know what to expect, put it in, didn't, couldn't stop. It was one of those, I felt like it was like a signal of what is to come, especially in the Christian music realm that tends to be overly poppy. Mm-hmm. It was one of those albums you're like, yes, I feel like we've hit something here. Something's going on. Great partner to Gunger as well in, in the way that they feel. 
also thought Vampire Weekend Contra. Uh, that's kind of a, it's one of long as well as Group One Crew for me, which I'm almost some people got on me for saying that the other day, <laughs> but it's a guilty pleasure. It's one of those ones I, I pop in the car, especially when it's nice weather. So maybe not right now. Open the windows, get your head bopping up and down. It's good stuff. Yeah, definitely. And one we also agree on is Arcade Fire, the suburbs. Um, they make good music, and for the third CD in a row. It's something you could probably listen to and like. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There was a ton of great music in 2010. These are just a few of our picks. Now we'll move on to looking at TV and movies. Now we're talking about 2010 movies and TV. Joe, a couple of my picks for TV best of 2010: Parenthood, uh, Modern Family, Justified, and The Walking Dead. All those I thought were solid shows. Great stories, great acting, definitely on my DVR into 2011. And a good range of shows there too, good options. The, yeah, I, I, I want to keep, I want to vary it up. It's kind of like <laughs> a trail mix of TV shows right. for me. I like that description. All right, a couple of shows I really liked, uh, Community uh, on NBC. Uh, it's got some great characters. Uh, I think it's pretty well written. Um, also, it's gone now, but it was in 2010, Lost, um, which had some great characters as well. Jack. Um, if you're going to be stranded on a desert island or a tropical island, either type, uh, seems like a pretty good guy to be stranded with because he's a doctor. Um, also, um, Running Wild, which unfortunately is canceled, but uh, it's got Will Arnett, uh, who I think is a funny actor, and uh, he's from Arrested Development. They've got some of the same people involved on that show as well. So, um, unfortunately, it's canceled. But so it was funny, but it know, was. Yeah, it ran its run. <laughs> it ran its. Rennes course. Yep. So, movies in 2010. There were some, also some great ones. Uh, I put Inception. I mm -hmm. thought was fantastic. I put Night and Day. People hate Tom Cruise, <laughs> but honestly, it was a great movie. Laughed a lot. Really good action. Inception was a good one. And then I thought animated stuff. You and I both have kids. We watch a yeah. lot of animated stuff, but it's always good as adults have animated films that I don't just tolerate, but I love. Toy Story 3... Uh, How to Train Your Dragon, Despicable Me, Tangled. All of those I enjoyed sitting through. Yeah, they were good. I just actually, the last, last movie I saw was Tangled in theater. And um, I was with my daughter. So that, uh, just to clarify, uh, it was a good movie. Um, I also like True Grit. Um, it's a great Western redone. And um, the soundtrack is good as well. It's got Leaning on the Everlasting Arms as probably its primary uh, musical contribution. Um, and I think we've, yes, yeah, some of those movies we've been talking about. Um, I haven't seen most of the front runners for the Oscars, but I'm looking forward to watching them this year now that they're a year old. Last segment of the UG Podcast, episode four. We're talking about technology from 2010. One of my favorite pieces of technology, the iPad. Check this thing out, Joe. This thing is a piece of beauty. We have two of these at the underground, and you know what? A lot of people said the tablet computer was dumb for Apple to try. Look who's laughing now. What about you, man? What do you think is the best technology from 2010? Boy, I know the iPad, you know, that's great and all, but check this out. Booyah. It is the iPhone 5. I picked this up on the street the other day from a guy named Ralph. 50 bucks, no receipt needed. That's not an iPhone. This, I'm pretty sure this is an iPhone 5. It's got 5G network. It's got hands-free, voice-free, detachable antenna. It's a little hard, but you can just work at it. Detachable antenna. Um, I guess the heavier it is, the better it is. And that thing's like indestructible. It's like. Base, virtually indestructible. It's also um, oh. <laughs> minorly waterproof, I've heard. Um, this is going to do for cell phones what Rocky did for boxing. It's also got this incredible new feature called iMind. Let me just demonstrate for you. What are you doing? What? How did you do that? You're in my world now, Art Sock. I mind it calls for you. It's got some other incredible features, so make sure you get this as soon as you can. iPhone 5. I'll sell this to you for 55 bucks right now. <laughs> That's unbelievable. That's $5 profit. Hello, Steve Jobs. How are you? <laughs> He's there, I'm sure. He's there. 